I'm Phil Dooley and today I'm chatting with plasma physicist Peter DeVries. Thanks for coming along, Peter. Hello, Phil. Thanks for joining us. Um, what have you brought along with you? Uh, well, this is a Jacob's Ladder. Ah, and what does it do? It makes plasma. It makes plasma, a plasma physicist's favourite toy. So, uh, show me. Yep. Wow. It's pretty easy. Flick of a switch and you've got plasma. That's right. Okay, so what's going on here? Um, well, first of all, you can see these uh, two copper plates. Uh, we apply a very two, a high voltage in over them, so there's a difference of about 10,000 volts right. in between the two plates. And that ionizes the air in the small gap at the bottom. Right. And this creates uh, a plasma, an arc, right. uh, and that this arc rises to the top where the gap gets too big in order to sustain the arc. Right. So it starts at the bottom where there's a, a small gap. Mm -hmm. That's right. But why does it go up? Um, because of course the, the, the plasma gets hot uh, right. and hot air goes hot up. Hot air rises, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's, that's quite obvious really. Yeah. So is this a lightning strike? Uh, yeah, that's right. Um, only uh, a lightning strike will be of course over a much larger distance with mm -hmm. a much higher voltage. Yeah. This is a lightning strike over a very small gap uh, right. with a lower voltage, but in this case still about 10,000 volts. Right, so, uh, so the easiest thing to do obviously would be to get it really close together, is that right? That is what you would think. And therefore if you make the gap too small, it will not work. Uh, if you make the gap too big, it will also not work. Oh, okay, so you've got to get it just right. Just right. But that is not true. Uh, there is an optimum gap. Mm -hmm. What you need is sufficient gap in order to get the ionization process really going. Uh -huh. And that is because people would think that it's really the voltage that yeah. is pulling apart the atoms and the yeah. electrons and the ions in, in opposite directions. But that is not the only process that ionizes the plasma. Each electron is accelerated in the electrical field and collides with the other atoms and creates more uh, ion and electron pairs. Right, so you actually end up with a whole lot of them all flowing together. I mean, I guess that's why yeah. it's such a big, that's more than one electron we can see. Yes, flowing and, and, backwards and, and forwards. what you get is an avalanche process. Uh -huh. So each electron will create a new electron and those two electrons create four new, three new electrons, etc. Et mm -hmm. So is this the same thing as goes on inside JET? Um, exactly, not identical, but yeah. very similar. Well, can you explain it to me on the diagram over here? Yeah, yeah okay. we can go there. So, where in JET is the gap? Where we, we, we had our spark on the machine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what you would think, like JET, as you can see, is a, a torus. Uh -huh. um, and we make the plasma in this toroidal shape, so uh -huh. basically the gap should be infinite because that's where we want to make the plasma. Uh -huh. We have an infinite gap. Uh, but that is of course not the reality. The, the plasma or the particles are confined by this toroidal magnetic field that we have. Um, but this is not pure toroidal. So the magnetic field lines wobble a little bit. And mm -hmm. then in the end, they will just go around and around. And after several kilometers, we just hit the wall. Uh, right. And that is basically the gap we have. So we have a gap of several kilometers. Right, so you must need huge voltages for that, like lightning, you know, millions, yeah. billions of degrees. Yeah, so then that's what you would think, like, uh, but that is not the case because we, we don't do this in air and not mm -hmm. in atmospheric pressure. So the Jacobs ladder needed 10,000 volts for a very small gap. We have a very large gap, but we have not air, we have probably about a million times less pressure than the normal atmospheric pressure in the torus. So mm. we put a very tiny little bit of gas into near vacuum, which is then broken down, so we get this breakdown at uh, only a few volts. So is this to do with the collisions that we were talking about That's before? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it because there's less pressure, it travels further before it collides? Yeah. So the, the, the electrons will collide in this case, instead of several milli, mi, micrometers, they will travel several meters before they collide. But right, of course, okay. it also takes several kilometers before the electrons will reach the Going anode, the which is the wall here. Right, basically. but you still haven't told me how we actually, what, 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 what the gap is, where, where are there electrodes in here? Because you, you would think like if I stick an anode and a cathode in, then I can make the plasma and I need that. But of course you only get an arc in between mm. those two points and you want to get it to go around. Traveling, yeah. yeah. So what we use is transformer action. Uh -huh. So in the middle of this, this center column, we have a big coil. Yeah. So there's a coil going around like this with many windings, mm. actually 700 windings. 
and we apply a very high voltage on this. Yeah. And the secondary winding is nothing else than what you see here. That's the torus, that's the plasma. And so once that's happened, then we've got plasma. We're away. We, we're doing fusion, aren't we? We are almost there. So the, the, the plasma that we get is, is uh, just after the avalanche process, something like 100,000 kiloamps, 100,000 100, amperes. Um, and the temperatures are almost like a million degrees. That's, that's, that's quite cold for a this is fusion plasma. Uh, from that point we have to further increase the, the plasma current in jet to several million amperes and also uh, the temperature needs to go even higher to something like a hundred million degrees in right. order to get uh, sustained fusion plasma. Okay, thank you for your time today. That's My been pleasure. very informative. We hope you enjoyed this video and for more lessons and videos go to freakphysics.com.